Hello guys, welcome back. It is the third part of the series Roadmap to Competitive Programming. We have already discussed why and what of the data structure and algorithm in the first two videos. Link to them is at the top and in the description below. Now it's time to discuss how to use them in competitive programming. So let's get started. Let's revisit what we have learned so far about competitive programming. In the previous video, we will discuss what is competitive programming. We saw it is a mind sport that helps a person improve his or her logical ability to devise a solution to a given problem statement in a challenging and competitive environment. It means that when you are put in a challenging environment, we do give our best and think of a more optimized solution on the go. This is in turn increases our logical thinking to do our best in the day to day coding life. But how it is different than everyday coding that we do? You might be in a college or an experienced IT professional, but it applies to all of us. Competitive programming is different than all the things that we do in everyday coding. In case of real world, development is often spread over days or months, while in competitive programming, you have only few hours to solve the problem. Coming to the size of the application, development in the real world is much like building the whole calculator. It has many different functionalities and complex integrated computations. While competitive programming is much like creating a solution to just one problem without having any bigger picture. In real world, we work in a team while in competitive programming, we are all by ourselves. Usually there are more than 10 people working on the same code and you need to keep in mind that your solution should not affect the current functionality. Developing an application or functionality requires team meeting to discuss what is the problem statement. There are discussions to pinpoint down the real problem. After the discussion, there is always analysis over it as to what should be the approach to solve the problem. Is the proposed solution scalable? Is it reusable? After finishing these details comes the development of code. Here actual coding is done. Now we need to test if the code works for all the sample inputs and is good to merge into the main branch. We merge the code into the main branch and then wait for the integration testing to be completed. Once that is done and successful, we are ready to deploy our code into production. While in competitive programming, it is just the development of code with optimized time and space without any hassle of meeting or discussion. You're free to take any decisions around architecture and data structures for your code. Now that we have seen the differences, let's take this further and discuss how it can help you. You can either be a software professional in an IT company or you can be an engineering student getting ready to start coding your way into the IT sector. For each of you, competitive programming is a way to enter into your dream company, although it is not the only way. Companies test you a bit differently. If you are an engineering student, you will be tested on your coding skills, your knowledge of data structures and algorithm, and your logical abilities. While if you are a software professional, the company does understand that you are not regularly in touch with the DSN algo and the interview is more towards your current and previous projects, your problem solving ability, team management, and technical knowledge. They might test you for DSN algo in one round, but not in every round. Seeing the difference in competitive programming and real world applications can be more easily understood by live examples. Let us discuss some. If I go into any of the coding website and open a question, we see a problem statement and the constraints for the input as well. There is some operation that we need to do. We need to come up with a solution to the problem in optimized time and space. So we write some code. Now this code is a standalone piece and do not adhere to any standard or architecture. Now coming to a real world application. Let's take an example of Audacity. If you haven't heard of it, it is an open source software used in audio editing. The application looks like this and there are a lot of features and functionalities in it. Let's see its repository. You can see there is a particular folder structure and more than 100 people are actively working on the same code base. Code is varied across different languages. A proper documentation and a release timelines are followed. So we are not using the same technique and approaches of competitive programming in the real world. Now the question is, if we do not use it while on the job, then why are the companies testing it so heavily? 
The reason is in line with any other field. There are a lot of candidates out there and in order to filter out the best of the best candidates, the companies test us so rigorously. They test us on data structure and algorithm because it tells them about our thinking capabilities and logical ability. Now, what it has for you? When you do competitive programming, you build your logical thinking and innovate with an out-of-box optimized approach while taking care of the deadline. You have to take into account all the edge cases too and do smart work rather than hard work. So you prevent yourself from reinventing the wheel. We will wind up this video here. Up next is how to start with competitive programming wherein we will discuss the resources and the topics to get started with.